Hey guys, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In today's video, we're going to show you how to take advantage of the free community plan for Power Apps offered by Microsoft. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. If you are just learning Power Apps, one of the best ways of learning is to sign up for the community plan with Microsoft. This gives you the ability to create unlimited applications in your own development environment. So let's see how to do that in today's video. So first of all, I have opened up PowerApps.com. So I, you may see that URL is a little different from mine, but if you go to PowerApps.com, it will take you there. Once you're there, you'll notice if you go to the pricing page, the fastest way of finding it is go to pricing, scroll to the very bottom, and then you'll see this explore Power Apps for free. I'll put the direct link in the chat window as well, not in the chat window, in the description of this video also. Uh, you want to click on this learn more where it says explore power apps for free. Now, if you have a company environment, you're going to want to select this option right here. This is going to create a community plan inside of your company's environment. A few things to note there. For some of my government employees, this may not work. The IT structure may have actually locked this down for you. Additionally, some of my larger enterprise customers, this may have also uh, been locked out for you as well. You can also click Get Started for free, and it will create a tenant for you inside of Microsoft if you only have something like a Gmail address or something like that. That could be a good place to start as well. In my case, I'm going to go in and uh, uh, click on Create an Individual Environment. It'll ask me which country I'm in. All right, I'll go ahead and accept. And after I do that, it's going to create an environment inside of my company's tenant. Okay. Again, if you don't have a tenant right now, you can create a, a, a fake tenant basically to do that. Now, once you've done this, you'll notice up top, it might not say your name environment. Instead, it will say something like your company name default, for example. If it does not say that, it likely will not, you're going to want to refresh your browser because it takes about 30 seconds to kind of build that environment out. Refresh your browser, then go over to where it has your name uh, tenant at that point. So I've, I've got, got one open right now. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you want to go to data and tables and you're going to want to create a dataverse environment or a common data services environment is the old name. Again, this common data services environment allows you to create uh, tables and relate data back and forth inside of your own personalized environment. So I'll hit the create a database button, give it a currency of some sort. In my case, I'm, I'm in the United States, so I'll select US dollars. I'm not going to check install sample apps, but you can do that, of course. Uh, if you do select that, it's going to ask you to name uh, a URL. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just create sample apps. That, that's fine. That's fine in my case. Okay, but typically speaking, go ahead and uncheck that create sample apps. After you do that, it will spend about five minutes building out the environment. You'll notice it says it looks like it's an error. It's not an error. Uh, wait about five minutes, and at, in about five minutes, hit the data and tables again, and you might see your data tables at that point. So we'll talk about some other stuff while we're waiting for that. And if I hit data tables right now, notice it's rounding you right back to solutions saying, hey, nothing's built yet. We're building it right now. So stay, so be patient. Additionally, as I'm doing this, you'll notice when I hit the gearbox now and I go to plans, that I now have the community plan. Okay, that's what we just added by hitting that create an individual environment. This individual environment allows you to create as many applications as you want with some restrictions. There's two big ones I can think of. The first and largest restriction is you cannot share these applications with others. The community plan is about you learning Power Apps and not necessarily about you building you know, uh, and buy apps out and then sharing them out with others and all that. That is not what it's about. It's about you learning Power Apps. But think of it this way. Microsoft has basically given you a dev server in your environment, in your own company's environment. This dev server, you can build out applications, and once you're ready, you can export them out and import them into your company's dev environment also. So it's that you still can do that. Now, you'll notice I get this something that's went wrong here. If I refresh now under data and tables, oh, under data and tables, you'll notice it actually should give me some tables now. There we go. It's looking good. 
This is the common data services or dataverse tables. And we use this a number of ways. You'll use this to build model-driven apps, apps out, and you'll use it for building out a, um, a portal application also. So the first restriction for that community license, uh, you cannot share applications. However, you can build out solutions and then share them with others. That is an option. You can also go to apps here and you can export or import apps out here as well. So if I select this asset checkout, you'll notice I can, uh, I said that that's the wrong kind of app. But if I pick a uh, Canvas app, I can actually export them out, else, out also. The second restriction is under data and data flows that, that currently these, these individual environments do not have access to data flows. Data flows are where you can import data into the CDS or Dataverse. And it's intentionally turn off for large enterprises because a lot of like hospitals, insurance companies, they didn't want to see all these individual environments out there that were importing uh, data into uh, Dataverse. They didn't want HIPAA data or privacy data inside of individual environments. So that was one of the logical reasons why they, they turned that off in this case. So those are the two restrictions that I know about, at least, in these two environments. They, um, but everything else you'll be able to do and play around and uh, explore Power Apps for free. So in this video, we showed you how to go and create that environment. Again, you will need a Microsoft tenant to do that. If you don't, you can set up a sample tenant to kind of play around in. And once you do that, you're ready to go. You can go ahead and build whatever kind of applications. You just cannot share them. All right, so thanks for watching this. This is, of course, uh, a, a type of environment we use in all of our classes because it's great for, for playing around. You won't actually interfere with anybody else. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask those questions down below. Additionally, we have a whole bunch of, uh, of, of classes at pragmaticworks.com. We have boot camps. And additionally, we also have hackathons where you can learn to build applications with your own applications, not our sample applications. All right, thanks for watching this. Subscribe, if you, subscribe and like this if you, if you uh, got something out of this today. And have a great day. Goodbye.